thank you, Central Family, for letting me be part of this today, for being the kind of church. This is the first time I've been in a church that had a service of this sort, and it's a real blessing to me to be in a, an extra special place where we honor our families and our mothers especially and our children in this way. So thank you for this. Thank you for Felicia and all the work you did making this possible. Thank you for being patient. I know we've gone a little long, and then it was on a Sunday when we said, keep your kids with you, so that makes it like triple long, and I, I'm going to keep my part blissfully short, I promise. Um, in fact, I'm going to break my cardinal rule of preaching today, Derek. You can call me a hypocrite later. I rant on this on a regular basis that when you're writing a sermon, you start with your scripture, and then if you want to think of a cute story to tell, you can add that on later. Today I thought of my cute story to tell first, and then it was like, what scripture goes with that? And that's kind of what today is. I want to talk about the faith of Maxine Nichols. And this last week in particular, um, got to do my own uh, graduation on Friday, and so the build-up to that, and you're sitting there, and they're getting ready to confer a degree on you, and you think about the people in your life who led you up to that moment. And for me, it's kind of a slideshow of my own parents, of my wife, of my children, of lots of different people in my life that have made my life possible. But there's one person and one face that just kept coming up over and over again, and it's one of my grandmothers, Maxine Nichols, and all that she meant to me. Um, Maxine lived in Drumride, Oklahoma, which is one of the places where my dad got to preach and where I spent a few years as a very small child, about three, four, five years old, and small country church transformative for me in my life and the whole time I was there I knew where I was supposed to be and that was in Maxine Nichols lap anytime I was in the building that was the spot for me and she'd uh, hold her hymnal and follow the little words along where I could pretend I was reading and singing whatever and and then she'd amuse me and entertain me while dad preached for 45 minutes and helped me get through the service and, and 45 minutes that's right this will be much shorter Maxine Nichols was, for me, just a huge influence, and it didn't stop when I was a little kid. We moved away when I was five to live in Seminole, and uh, I grew up at a distance from Maxine and didn't get to see her very much through the years. And then at the age of 16, um, I was starting just barely to do some preaching, some very, very bad preaching uh, for different little small churches around Oklahoma. And uh, one of them that said, hey, we need a guy to come fill in a couple times a month was the Westport Road Church of Christ up in, that doesn't even exist now, but it was up in the Cleveland, Oklahoma area. And I said, that's perfect. I'll just, you know, get up on Sunday mornings at the age of 16, just with learn how to drive, and I'll drive an hour and a half up to uh, Cleveland and preach whenever they want me to twice on a Sunday. And uh, my dad wasn't thrilled about the idea of his 16-year-old son, who he didn't believe could drive well, and he was right. Uh, driving up an hour and a half Sunday morning on a regular basis. Well, guess who was in between Seminole and Cleveland? Uh, it was Drumright and Maxine Nichols. And so she says to Dad, hey, it's not a problem. He drives up on a Saturday. He spends the night with us. We'll feed him. We'll make sure, you know, gets a good night's rest. And then we'll send him the rest of the 20 minutes up to Westport and he can preach. And I stayed in her home for, you know, three years, several times a month. And again, got to preach so many really bad sermons only because of that lady who took the time to make her home open for me and is a lot of the reason I'm here. Um, when Selena and I were married, we you know, got to seat her as grandparents are seated, and uh, along with her husband, Nick, who wrote a goofy poem and read it at the reception, and it was pretty fun. And then a few years later, um, I stood by her as uh, Nick passed, and then uh, was there at, at her funeral when she passed very shortly thereafter. Uh, my dad preached her funeral, and I got to uh, lead the singing. And at the graveside there in Drumright, I'm standing there, and I'm looking around at all of the children and grandchildren of Maxine Nichols and of the faith and influence she had, and not a single one of them was related to her. Maxine Nichols never actually had any children. She had, she had one. If you were to go into her bedroom, there was a little picture of a small little infant that she had who lived about a day and then passed away. And Maxine decided that having children wasn't going to be in the cards for her. She never had any more children. Instead, she decided from that day forward that every child who walked through the church door was hers. 
and there are people my age and older and younger throughout the state of Oklahoma and especially in Drumright who were Maxine Nichols' children. Not surrogate children, not adopted children, children with no asterisks and no disclaimer. You know what I mean? Like children. And at that funeral, you look around and there's 20 or 30 adults there who believe what they believed and were Christians because of a woman who said, those are my kids. And I was one of them. When I think of the faith of Maxine Nichols, it's a testament to what Christian family means. It's a promise of God. In Isaiah, the 54th chapter, God makes this promise. Sing, O barren one who did not bear. Break forth into singing and cry aloud, you who have not been in labor. For the children of the desolate one will be more than the children of her who is married, says the Lord. Enlarge the place of your tent and let the curtains of your habitations be stretched out. Do not hold back. Lengthen your cords and strengthen your stakes. For you will spread abroad to the right and to the left, and your offspring will possess the nations and will people the desolate cities. Fear not, for you shall not be ashamed. You will not be confounded, for you will not be disgraced. For you will forget the shame of your youth and the reproach of your widowhood when you remember no more. For your maker is your husband, the Lord of hosts is his name. The Holy One of Israel is your Redeemer, the God of the whole earth he is called. For the Lord has called you like a wife deserted and grieved in spirit, like a wife of youth when she is cast off, says your God. God has promised that in his kingdom what is impossible will not only be possible but downright likely. He says to women who may not have any children of their own, build bigger tents because you're going to have more kids than you can imagine. And in our church setting today, you have an opportunity to be that and live that in a way unprecedented. There has never been a time more than now when young mothers, young children, teens need to be embraced by families that are not their own. They need adults in their lives, especially mothers, who love them and care for them. As a church, you today can have as many children as you want to have. They are hungry for parents and for the love that Christian parents can provide. And you are those people. This is our family. And it's a privilege to be part of it. It's as big as you want it to be. This morning, as we kind of land the plane here and conclude, what I'd like to do then is read to you from a precious passage in the book of Deuteronomy, which emphasizes the faith and significance of transmission of faith from one generation to the next. What I'm going to ask you to do is, just in a moment, we'll be standing, I'll read the scripture to you, and then I'm going to give you a charge, a, an opportunity to make a sacred promise before God to be parents, to be family, to be children in God's own image. Would you be standing as we read from God's holy word? This from Deuteronomy chapter 6. Now this is the commandment, the statutes and rules that the Lord your God commanded me to teach you, that you may do them in the land to which you are going over to possess it, that you may fear the Lord your God, you and your son and your son's son, by keeping all his statutes and his commandments, which I command you all the days of your life, and that your days may be long. Hear therefore, O Israel, and be careful to do them, that it may go well with you, and you may multiply greatly, as the Lord, the God of your fathers, has promised you, and a land flowing with milk and honey. Shema Yisrael, Adonai, Arehenu, Adonai Echad. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your might. And these words that I command you today shall be on your heart, and you shall teach them diligently to your children, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontlets between your eyes. You shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates. And when your son asks you in time to come, what is the meaning of the testimonies and the statutes and the rules the Lord our God has commanded you? Then you shall say to your son, We were Pharaoh's slaves in Egypt, and the Lord brought us out of Egypt with a mighty hand, and the Lord showed signs and wonders great and grievous against Egypt and against Pharaoh and all his household before our eyes. 
and he brought us up out from there that he might give us and bring us the land that he swore to give to our fathers. And the Lord commanded us to do all these statutes to fear the Lord our God for our good always, that he might preserve us alive as we are this day. And it will be righteousness for us if we are careful to do all this commandment before the Lord our God as he has commanded us. Amen. Felicia, if you can come up and help me, what I'll do is I'll read the charge, which comes in the form of a question, and then your job, if your name's on the screen, is to read along with Felicia in response. The first charge goes to children and to teens. Children, will you promise to learn to love God with all your heart? Will you promise to learn to love others as yourself? We will love others as ourselves. Parents, will you promise to love your child unconditionally as God has loved you? We will love our children unconditionally. Will you dedicate yourself to growing in your child a deep love for God and a wide love for others? We will teach our children. And in church, will you promise to love every child in this church as your own? We will love those children as our own family. Will you share with these children a knowledge of God and of the gospel of Jesus Christ? We will teach these children about God and 